Hello everyone, it's Sina from Beating Around the Books. Um, it's been a little while since I've uploaded the last video. I don't seem to be very good at keeping a balance or like keeping a strict schedule and I apologize. Maybe I'll get better at that. Um, but anyway, I needed a short break from social media and so I took one. Um, what do I want to do today? Um, a tag video, a somewhat autobiographical tag which was created by Mark at Book Time with Elvis, who is also largely responsible for my huge backlog <laughs> of tags. So I thought, you know, let's chip away at these ones. Let's do this. So he tagged me on this. Did I say this? I'm not sure. <laughs> he did. He originated it and he tagged me. Thank you, Mark. Okay. First question. What was the number one best-selling book, fiction and or non-fiction, on the day you were born? Have you read them? So the number one uh, in fiction was Misery by Stephen King. I have not read this book. I have read a few Stephen King books as a teenager. Um, this was not one of them. I don't think I will try and revisit him. Um, Nonfiction I couldn't find. Um, there's like this Wikipedia list, right? And not, my year is not in there <laughs> for some reason. And I tried to find it elsewhere and you have to have a subscription and whatever. So I didn't bother. Okay, number two. What are some books, series or standalone that immediately spring to mind when you think of your childhood? Um, I grew up on a lot of these classic children's books, um, I guess, you know, that were already popular in the generation before me, because that's what my dad chose to read to me. So there would be a lot of Erich Kästner, um, then there's Ottfried Preußler, um, then there is Michael Ende, I think you guys know Michael Ende from The Never Ending Story, which was made into a film otherwise. But he's written a few other books that I actually loved more than The Never Ending Story. Um, so it's all men. <laughs> oh yeah, there's also Enid Blyton, those types of things. Um, Astrid Lindgren, the sort of typical stuff. And then another thing that I think was slightly more contemporary at the time was probably Das Sams. Um, Anyway, those are things that come to mind right now. Then, school days are the best days of, wait, sorry, let me, school days are the best days of your life, apparently, I would disagree with that, but anyway, but there you were forced to read some books you maybe wouldn't have chosen for yourself. Which did you enjoy? Um, I could actually go for a few, not that I loved everything that I had to read, but this one is, um, Homo Faber by Max Frisch. I don't know, maybe a controversial choice, given the subject matter, but who cares? I did not expect to like this because I had read another Max Frisch book well, two years before I was forced to read this in school. I um, absolutely hated that. Um, now I'm wondering if it was due to that teacher who just ruined it for me because this one then I read with a different teacher who I loved and who kind of reignited my love for German classes um, and you know actually using my brain and taking part in discussions and stuff um, and this I loved and I you know I went in thinking I hated Max Frisch when in fact I had just hated that play and maybe it was Andorra by the way and maybe it wasn't even the play Maybe it was just my shitty teacher. So this one is my choice. Again, like I said, there were a few others, but I feel like this one I was, I had the most, you know, the strongest feelings about going in, the strongest negative feelings. And I was utterly uh, surprised by how much I loved it. Number four, were you independent or part of a pack at school? Did you join in the reading fads of the day or do your own thing? Well, are these two things? To, I don't know, because I felt like reading generally was a rather lonely business. I mean, it still is, but it isn't through booktube maybe. But so, A, no, I wasn't, I wasn't part of a pack generally. I may have had, you know, the odd friend or whatever, but I wasn't like in large groups. And also my reading was my business and rarely did I ever talk to anybody about what they were reading. In fairness, there's also very few readers. So, yeah, I guess in reading fads then, no. I mean, apart from, of course, Harry Potter. But I'm happy to report I actually was ahead of the trend. I had to wait for each and 
every one of them, you know. I think it got big around the third one. And I read the first one when there was only one out and loved it. And nobody fucking listened to me until the third book. And then they were like, oh, oh yeah, can you lend me that book? But yeah, that's it. Five, as you moved into your turbulent teens, can you remember your first experience encountering sex in a book? Probably not. Um, I thought about it for a moment and I don't think, like I'm sure I read some shitty teenage book where there was sex in it and I obviously have forgotten it since, which is probably a good thing. Um, the first one that I can like remember having sex in it and you know, have a book that I haven't forgotten is uh, Milan Kundera's Die Unerträgliche Leichtigkeit des Seins. What is that in English? The Unbearable Lightness of Being. I think that has sex in it, no? Pretty sure it does. Um, yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> what is the next one? What were some of the first kinds of non-fiction you encountered? Um, I think it may have been books about dinosaurs, most likely. I was really into dinosaurs. And... Um, whether they came before or after encyclopedias for children, I'm not sure, but those two. Um, yeah, probably. Um, next one. Hey, where are you? Excuse me. Oh, whose bookshelf was more fun to raid, mums or dads? Um, I don't think they had necessarily divided bookshelves, but given the fact that my mum is not... A native German speaker she, and she had also left her home so she didn't have a huge ton of like you know Chinese language books most of the books on the shelves were my dad's um, so I would say my dad's I guess also he was the bigger reader generally from my parents um, yeah my dad's and I definitely did read it also for some books that I was not supposed to be reading but I don't think it hurt Number eight, how diverse is your library? See below. So uh, Mark has included this long list of categories. I think they were from Goodreads or something. Um, so you can use the list and count through how many categories uh, you may have. And um, actually there are quite a lot. Um, I think I counted 25 or 26. It says 25 to 26. I guess I was undecided at some point. Um, let's have a look at the list. Um, arts and photography, yeah, one or something like that. Biography, yes. No business finance or law in this house. Although I used to have some law books, but I've got rid of them since. Calendars, diaries, annuals, yes. Children's books, yes. Comics and graphic novels, mm-hmm. Crafts, hobbies, home. Crime, fillers, mystery, I said yes, but you know, like, there's also just a one. Education, studies and teaching, same, one of each or whatever, or two or three. Um, fiction, food and drink, foreign language, study and reference I have, history, horror, humor. LGBTQ plus books, music stage and screen, poetry, drama and criticism, politics, philosophy and social sciences. Yeah, probably again, like one or two. Um, I don't know what I'm doing here. Let's go back. 25 categories. I, I assume that that's quite diverse. But of course, some of them are, you know, I might have one or two. Like, I don't have a lot of language reference books, but I have a few. Um, same with like teaching books. I assume that's relatively diverse. I'm not sure. Next one. What types of books do you find difficult to discuss? Um, I don't know. Well, I mean, I've, I'm, I haven't really got an amazing track record so far of discussing any books, to be honest. Um, I think obviously any book that goes over my head. Right, what's the point of me trying to discuss it if I didn't understand it? Um, then some books where I just feel like maybe I've got a grasp and then I'm not sure what it was meant to be doing. Those kinds of books. Um, and then sometimes I also find book, even if I feel like, yeah, I kind of got the gist or something, if they're very, very complex, but then... I mean, it depends, right? You're not supposed to write a book report that 
like discusses every single detail. So if it really fascinated me, then maybe I would be able to. Um, and actually, I wonder sometimes whether the ones that I really love, I may not be very good at discussing, possibly, because I just end up gushing over it and just telling anybody, everybody that I loved it and that you have to pick it up. Um, yeah, maybe I'm not very good at answering this question because my channel is so new and I haven't been doing this for a long time. Anyway, and then, well, the other thing that's obviously difficult to discuss is anything that left you with the meh feeling, because what's the point? But maybe that's not difficult then, you just wouldn't want to waste your time on it. Okay, number 10. In what way do your life experiences and emotions shape your choice of reading? I don't know how to answer this. <laughs> like, how can you entangle them? How my life experience and emotions? I don't know. Do they? Sometimes I like more escapist fiction, so I guess when I'm in that mood and feeling that kind of emotion, I might choose one thing over another. A life experience. Well, I guess, yeah. Now I have one idea of how to answer this. So I think when I was younger, I had a lot less respect for books. Meaning, I mean, not less, I was always treating them very well, but I had a lot less sort of awe and respect in terms of, oh my God, this might be too difficult for me. I didn't think that way. Um, and I don't know why. Like as a child, obviously I would read mostly children's books, but I remember, I think the first time I picked up an adult book was probably a Roald Dahl book, one of his short story collections. And I think I was under 10 years old then. It was just because I'd liked some Roald Dahl books and my dad had also read a few of his short stories to me, which were for adults. And so I just picked a random one, of course, one that I wasn't supposed to be reading. Anyway, and it was fine. I, I didn't think it was that difficult or anything like that. And then when I got older, it, it was the same, you know, you know, like when you first pick up another adult book, no, it's not Roald Dahl, I don't know, like this leads into another question, but one of the first ones in my memory was Franz Kafka that I read. And I was um, relatively young at that time, but it was not really too difficult. And then I ended up, you know, picking up whatever, thinking that I was fine, which I wasn't always. Um, I think my first major defeat was Ulysses. I tried reading that at 18 and and I, I think I tried that like five times or something until I actually read it. But um, so I think maybe the fact that my dad read all this stuff to me, which wasn't necessarily all children's books. Also, yeah, he read Stefan Zweig's chess story to me as a primary school child. And I loved, loved it. Um, made me not really afraid of picking up stuff. And I actually feel like um, that sort of apprehension has or this intimidation that I feel at certain books has actually grown as I got older. Maybe also, you know, because then at some point you also realize the limits of your own understanding and brain capacity or whatever, your intellect. Um, yeah, I don't know if this answered the question, I'm sorry. Let's go on. <laughs> Number 11, in much the same way as our taste for food changes, so perhaps does our taste in books. How would you say your own reading tastes have evolved over the decades? Um, well, I think certainly by now, I think I read more stuff that's that may be seen as more challenging, but that doesn't mean that I only do that. I'm not a snob. Like I also really like to read a good romp, you know, <laughs> whatever that may be, fantasy or good historical fiction thing, fiction novel, um, stuff like that. Um, one thing that has changed is I used to read a lot of fantasy as a teenager. That was a lot, just loads. And I still consider myself to be a fantasy reader, but I must admit, when I look at the last few years, or even maybe the last 10 years, I have still read fantasy, but it makes up a very small portion of what I'm reading. So that has probably shifted to reading more whatever, you you know, what you call literary fiction. 
and classics and blah 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 and contemporary fiction in general um otherwise yeah and then the other thing that's changed is i read obviously now i just read way 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 less german literature which is kind of a shame um but yeah i think i read mainly german well only german when i was very young and then in my teens as well most of the time hello there's a little cat saying hi oh here we go okay do you want to come in apparently somebody wants to get on my lap okay you can do that do you want to see him maybe let's try and do that hang on hello hello aladdin hmm? okay cat interlude over excuse me oh. there we go he's doing his own thing um where were we let's just get to the next one right <laughs> Yeah, so now I read mainly English books. That's it. Um, where's the next one? Hey. Unfortunately, we all feel down at certain times. Have you, have you got a go-to book to raise you back up? I don't think so. Well, this, this is all messed up now, isn't it, Aladdin? It's fine. I don't think so. Um, I think if I was really, really, really sad, I mean, I know that when I'm in that really down, I can't read. I can't read then. It's it's not it's not going to help. Not only is it not going to help, I can't focus on it. Um, whereas if I'm just slightly, what are we checking out now? Okay. Whereas if I'm just slightly, I don't know, in a bad mood, a little bit sad, maybe I might read, maybe I might read a Terry Pratchett book. It's like my go-to answer, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, but I, I don't know. He's just amusing and funny. Maybe I would read that. But I don't think if I was actually sad that any book would help. Okay, next one. Number 13. If you have to choose one book or author to represent each decade of your life, who or what would they be? The books should be ones you re read in that decade, not necessarily published in that decade. Okay, so... Um, from zero to ten, the first decade, I'm going to say, you know, Erich Kästner as a representative of a lot of the classical, not classic, the classic German children's lit I read. Um, and then from this in the second decade, ten to twenty, I feel like there was a that's a huge difference, right, between ten and twenty. So I'm going to cheat and say a few more. There was definitely Harry Potter because that kind of got me back into reading, into a massive read, reading frenzy almost. Um, then there was the Dragonlance series, uh, which was my gateway to, I guess, what you would call high fantasy. Um, and now here's the huge difference then, or the huge shift, I feel, because when I was 13, I picked up Franz Kafka. This is the first time I read him when I was 13, and it was perfect, because I was so depressed, a depressed teenager, you know, I was bullied and all that. And this just made me feel like somebody understood. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. It was, Metamorphosis was really, like, it was the right thing to read at the time. So then, you know, from Dragonlance to Franz Kafka and also Hermann Hesse, and I'm gonna say Steppenwolf for this one, because I think that was my first Hesse that I read around the time I was 17 or so, or 18, can't remember. Um, and then the next decade, from 20 to 30, um, I found it quite difficult, but I'm going to say Paul Auster, even though that probably, st well, that, I know that that started earlier because this is a school edition and that happened before I was 20, but I entered into a massive Paul Auster phase after, um, and that lasted well into my 20s. And then after that, I don't know, after that I just read all sorts of random stuff. And then um, I'm not done with that, with the next decade. I'm in the beginning to middle of it, but I've chosen one anyway to re represent this. And that would be Mark Danielewski, House of Leaves. Um, because this has really changed my perspective on what a novel can do and how different a novel can look like. There were other books that I got to know around the same time, but this 
is my representative for that anyway. Um, yeah, and we'll see what happens in the latter half of this decade. Okay, number 14. Of course, everyone is entitled to their own opinions, but how do you feel when people say reading is boring? And what would you say in defense of reading? I have no clue how to convince somebody to read. Um, I remember the first time somebody told, telling me very proudly that they had never read a book or they had never finished a book. Now, this was as a, I think, 12 year old or something in school. And I just looked at her in shock, you know, because I was like, how can you be proud of that? Like, why? Like, I thought, oh, how sad that you haven't found anything that was interesting to you. Or maybe, you know, that she didn't have the access to books and, um, but how would you tell somebody that it's fun if they don't already find it's fun? I don't know. No, I don't know what I'd say. Apart from, you know, the fact that I absolutely love it and I can't imagine my life without it. And, you know, they can do whatever they want. <laughs> number 15. What was the number one selling book on the day of your most recent birthday? Fiction and or non-fiction. Have you read them? So um, the fiction one is Camino Winds by John Grisham. I didn't even know he was still writing. <laughs> uh, no, I have not read him. I read this. I have read maybe two or three John Grisham novels, again, probably as a teenager, uh, because I'd seen some film that I liked. And, you know, you've read two or three and then, uh, well, then I was bored. Not bored. I was just not intrigued by them any longer. And then I've actually, this one, it was easy also to find the non-fiction one. It was Untamed by Glennon Doyle. And I have also not read that one. Although I feel like I've marked it down somewhere on my script just because it sounded interesting, but I actually do not know what it's about. So maybe I should check that. Maybe I will read it. Who knows? Okay, that is the end of this tag. The last thing to do is to tag a few people. Now, um, apologies again if these people have already been tagged. Uh, because I'm so late, it may very well have already happened for you, but I'm just gonna tag you guys anyway and hope for the best. So first there's Alan at Big Hard Books and Classics, who recently made the amazing COVID catch-up tag where we could all sort of see how things were in different parts of the world. Then we have Christina at Knitting Books Etc, a channel that I haven't, I've only just found. Not only just, but very recently. And then there's Bethan Bruninger Sock. I don't know how you pronounce your last name and I think I just saw that you you said you'd made a video that explains it but I haven't watched it yet well anyway you know who you who I mean Bethan <laughs> and the last person I'd like to tag is Bert at Pastori time so thank you very much for watching and I hope to speak to you soon in the comments bye bye